Okay, it's time to make the baklava. I know this is long, has been long waiting for this one. <laughs> so I finally was able to uh, get all the stuff together at one time. Got my walnuts, sugar, phyllo dough, uh, cinnamon sticks, toasted sesame seed. If you don't have toasted, you can use regular sesame seed and just toast it yourself. Unsalted butter uh, to brush the uh, phyllo dough. Some lemon juice, honey. Okay, so we're going to get the syrup going. And we got a nice saucepan. And I have all my ingredients I need right over here. I start off with a half a cup of water. Okay. This is a little bit of a reduced recipe from the original size because that makes a giant pan, but one cup of sugar. Okay. So I just cut it down a little bit. And then we're going to add in this nice um, eight ounces of um, pure honey. Okay. I'll add that right in there. And I use a little spatula to make sure I get all that honey in there. Okay, and I get this on a high to medium heat. Okay, I'm going to have uh, lemon juice. Okay, usually I put about a half of a lemon. That equates to about, um, oh, three capfuls of this lemon juice. So, if you don't have fresh lemon, that's a spilled over, so it's about two. Two and a half, three. Cinnamon stick. You could use a little stash of uh, cinnamon uh, if you like, but um, I just use these cinnamon sticks. Okay, and that's what that looks like. So you need you're going to need about two, two to three sticks, depending on, and, and a good pastry brush to uh, brush the um, phyllo dough with the unsalted, unsalted sweet cream butter. Okay, so now we have our uh, walnuts. And we're putting in approximately one pound, okay, the original recipe I think called for a pound and a half, that was on our bigger pan. So basically I took the original recipe and cut it down by a third, that in there, and about um, three tablespoons of this nice toasted almond seed, okay, and you want to put that right in there with it. One, two, yeah, just enough. Good call. So I'm going to need to get more sesame seed pretty soon. Okay, bring the food processor here. that's like sand and that's about right so I'll show you what that looks like you can see that and that's supposed about the consistency you see there's little bits of um, little pieces okay maybe about that big and then the rest is nice so that's about what you want of course while you're doing this you want to keep an eye on your um, syrup so that it doesn't uh, boil over. Okay, this started to uh, bubble up, so I lowered it. And that's mostly because of the uh, the water in there boiling off. Um, but the, the longer you cook it, the thicker the syrup's going to be. I'm going to tell you probably around, keep it on low for about, um, you know, I'm going to say about 10 minutes or so. Okay, so we have a going to get our butter, which is now nice and melted, okay, we got our phyllo dough, and while we're getting ready, this has been about 10 minutes or so, so I'm going to shut that down, ok, 
Okay, this field oil comes in one pound boxes. You want one pound, and this is nice because it comes in two packages, two packs. One pack, two packs, so one for the bottom, one for the top. That way the bottom uh, field oil doesn't, uh, the top field oil doesn't dry out while you're doing the bottom. Which is very nice, but um, I find that this uh, Athens brand works pretty good. It's very easy to work with, and do not attempt this while it's frozen, it will break. So you want to make sure that this um, phyllo dough has been fully thawed and very slowly, very carefully, you want to unroll it. Okay, I'll show you what this looks like here. Okay, you can see it's very, it's uh, very thin. Okay, very thin. So we're going to start by uh, putting the first coating on the bottom of the pan, the pastry brush. You don't need a lot, you just need enough to coat in between each sheet. So that way it won't get too um, too heavy with the butter. Okay, so just like that. And then you're gonna put your first sheet very carefully, just like dealing with tissue paper. Okay, you're gonna put that right in there like that. And again, just brush it very gently back and forth with your butter okay and if you find you're getting a little low you want to um, start you know can melt some more and so on and so forth you can see how easy that just tore so you want to use you want to be very careful very careful okay and if it brand fit tears that's okay just lay it up and again, keep brushing every every single layer gets brush of the uh, butter so that they don't stick together. That's what makes it so flaky. All right, and I'll come back after I have those all done up. Okay, so I got the first half pound of phyllo dough laid up, and as you can see, once you get really good at it, you can make one stick of butter perfect to a half a pound. Okay, so a nice walnut. Sesame seed mix. Get it all in there. Nice. Soft in the corners. You want to try to get as much of this out as you can because this stuff's expensive. <laughs> so, like such. All right. And then you just want to evenly spread it around so that it's a nice even thickness. Throughout, you want know, half of your baklava to be skinny and the other half to be fat. It's all good, though. It really doesn't matter. It's all good. There you go. Nice, evenly spread. And we'll start laying up the next uh, layers of uh, phyllo dough. Okay. I'm going to be very careful. Just wanted to show you this because the first layer is going to want to float over that. Um, um, the walnuts so um, you just want to do it very lightly until you get it set and then you can kind of brush it a little heavier okay so got that all layered up now before this goes in the oven very very important that you score this how you want to cut it if you want to go diagonal you want to go in squares traditionally I don't know my mom always I think used to go diagonal okay and about the size of the pieces that you want. And there's a twofold reason for this. First reason is you'll be able to cut your pieces of um, baklava much easier because the um, phyllo dough does get quite flaky after it's cut. And the second part, which is probably the most important part, a lot of people don't realize is so when I pour that syrup over the top of the baklava that's been cooked, it has somewhere to seep in and get to the nuts. And that is the trick to the baklava. And before I put this in the oven, get to know that this is recipe comes from my godmother who baptized me. Her name is Catherine Charis. 
And this is for you, uh, Godmother. Uh, happy Easter, wherever you are. Okay, so it's in the oven. I'm going to set the kitchen timer to 50 minutes. Okay, looks like um, we've got tone. Oh, perfect, yes. Okay, 50 minutes looks like it did the trick. Alright, let's get some nice. Burnt. Oh yeah, there we go. Gotta love that. See? Yeah, Wolfie knows something's up. Cause he knows the camera's out and he knows there's a pan on the counter. But that's what it looks like. I'm gonna come out beautiful, perfect. Pour the cool syrup. That's my nice um Cinnamon stick. Okay. And you want to pour the cool syrup over the hot baklava. And just go around. I usually go around the edges and I work my way in into the middle. And you can hear it bubbling a little bit. And that's okay. You want to drizzle it all over so it gets nice. Nice coating, and that will work its way through all the baklava. Okay, good to the last drop. And probably in about a half an hour, I'll cut these up and put them in the cups. And that is that. Enjoy, everybody. Okay, so look who's come in to get his taste. <laughs> Get your plate. Yeah, we'll get you a nice end piece here. Some of this nice baklava. And we will chop that up for you. only one person who gets would get a piece before Wolfie and that would be Papu when he did <laughs> when he was there earlier okay Wolfie there we go let's see if you like it mm, it looks like he likes the honey Yep, he's digging it. There goes the tail. It's a winner. <laughs> oh yeah, Wolfie's digging that. He is digging that baklava. Oh yeah, he's getting every little crumb. <laughs> Wolfie, you like that? Huh? Is that good? Is that good? There goes the tail. Yes, it is. Oh, he's a happy... That's one happy border collie, I'll tell you. <laughs>